Ruins Magus is one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in virtual reality. The adventure I went on as I made my way through this new VR JRPG showed me things from the VR medium that I'd been dreaming of for years. Join me, my dear virtual dreamers, as I tell you the tale of how I fought my way through the depths of Ruin Magus's drab caverns to find the brilliant treasures that laid within. To start this journey, let's lay out the groundwork of what exactly you're in for in this game. Ruins Magus is a story-driven VR JRPG about ruins and the magi that seek to plunder their depths. You take the role of a new recruit, out to make a difference in the world, and who ends up woven into the many threads of plotting and motivations therein. By successfully completing the quests assigned to you, you'll gain money and skills that will allow you to better match your foe's arsenals and adapt to the situations you're presented with. And mind you, those presentations are very much worth looking forward to, as without a doubt in my mind, the presentation of the story, characters, and world of Ruins Magus is the game's greatest triumph. From the moment you start playing, you'll be buffeted with an excellent soundtrack, vibrant visuals, colorful characters, and solid pacing. Whether you're wreaking havoc in a dungeon or leisurely strolling through the town square, the game will not relent in the pursuit of assuring that whatever you're looking at has had some degree of artistic flair placed on it. It truly made me glad the game has an in-game camera to take pictures with. It's a shame that the camera can't be used in the middle of battle though, as the game's combat is no slouch in the spectacle department either. Combat consists of moving about the battlefield via either smooth movements, teleportation, or long-range blinks to dodge attacks, using your shield to block or parry whatever you can't avoid, and using items to support your efforts when you're in a pinch, then unloading quick shots, power shots, grenades, or ultimate spells on enemies when you're ready to assert your dominance. Once you get comfortable in the rhythm of battle, you'll find yourself at the center of battles and spectacles that feel like something straight out of an anime, which in many ways is what it feels like to play Ruins Magus. From the quirky flamboyant characters, dramatic story beats, and lush artwork, every inch of Ruins Magus feels like someone poured their heart and souls into making it feel alive. When that passion-filled presentation, combat, and story come together in unison to deliver on a grander vision, I'll readily admit to getting completely lost in the moment. Alas, I only wish that was all there was to Ruins Magus, as it would leave things without reproach, but this is not a perfect game, and there are more things to go over in this discussion that I cannot in good faith leave alone, especially when you consider the issue is right there in the name. The titular ruins of Ruins Magus unfortunately suffer from repetition as the game goes on. Mind you, this isn't just using a reskinned template or procedural generation as a foundation, but rather entire maps you've previously gone through essentially being reused with only aesthetic differences and a few obstacles adjusted to try and bring about more variety. It really kills a lot of the adventure vibe when you feel like you're going through the same area three or four times with the art changed up a bit. Gorgeous, though they managed to make it. Speaking of adventure, I can't help but feel that action adventure might have been a better genre designation for Ruins Mages, as aside from the Japanese styling, the game has far more in common with action adventure games like Journey of the Gods or Devil May Cry than it does Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. The most customization you'll really get here comes about in your gauntlets aesthetics, your choice in magic, and how quick you are to make use of items. I never really felt like I was taking a character and really growing them of my own accord or molding them into a style that fit my nature. This is an issue which is only further compacted when you consider that there wouldn't be much to wield that personality on even if it were present as the game is fairly light on features. It took me only eight hours to beat the main game on normal difficulty, and this is accounting for several deaths, me taking my time to take in the sights, and my shield arm crapping up something fierce. I'd honestly love to have some kind of boss rush or horrid mode to test my skills on, but alas, I found no such thing when I tried loading up my file after beating the game. Were it not for the solid ending to the fairly standard story, I'd be a lot less chipper at this moment. Add to this some minor issues like a couple of crashes, the animations not perfectly syncing to the movement or ghosting into one another being a bit jarring, and a lack of much interactivity with the world, and there's plenty here that will make people second guess buying this game at its 35 US dollar launch price. There is a free demo available, so make sure to make use of it if you can. These are not depths to be ventured in carelessly. Here's the thing though, 
Whether it's the game being more action adventure than RPG, the short length, the repetition, or the myriad nitpicks I mentioned before, when I look back on my time playing this game, the only feeling that comes to the fore is the wonder I had throughout. Every last one of the things that could bring the experience down for me are just drowned out by the positivity radiating from the other great elements. So what if the game isn't much of an RPG? I saw small numbers go bigger and saw my playstyle change entirely with just clicks on the menu options. Getting better through my own real skills as a player filled the hole that I'd normally expect a standard level up system to fill for me. I'm already looking forward to more playthroughs while experimenting with other playstyles that's probably gonna clock in another 30 hours for me at the very least with no less than five of those probably being spent on just gazing at the world. The idea that a game can look this great on a Quest 2 natively, while still performing well and having few bugs, typos, and nitpicks as it does, completely changes my standards for VR, especially on standalone. Speaking of standards, while I don't want to spoil anything here, there are moments in this game that have outright opened my eyes to the possibilities for the VR medium that I just wasn't giving enough thought to prior to this. As someone who normally isn't a fan of cutscenes, I found myself looking forward to each one in this game, as the VR perspective brought life to them in a way that a traditional pancake equivalent just didn't ever do. The story of Ruins Magus is nothing to write home about, but it being in VR and the developers making use of the medium as well as they did, has outright had me thinking about it for several days after finishing it. Ruins Magus is not a perfect game, but for some, it will be the right game. The achievements of the title and presentation, combat execution, and storytelling are well worth your time if you wish to glimpse at the potential VR has in these areas. I certainly got more than my Eiffel's worth here, and for that, Ruins Magus is one of the greatest VR games I've ever had the pleasure of playing. Final score, 8.5 out of 10. Be wary if this kind of game isn't your cup of tea going in. But if you're fancying some magical boba, take the plunge into these ruins without a second thought.